Hello everyone, I hope all of you are doing fine and well. So today we'll be doing a case practice on intratripetal death. Let's have a brief talk about how you would break the bad news. Not how, because we'll be going uh, through it on the case scenario, but um, the impact of intrauterine fetal death, especially when it's late at around 34 weeks, which would be our scenario. Usually, breaking bad news or telling the parents, the birth parents, especially the mother, because that would be the scenario in the exam, would be the mother in most cases alone. It can be a devastating and a painful reality for her and her husband as well when he gets to know about this. It can be so devastating that it can leave them grieving from the moment they are told about um, such a finding or such an event. That's why breaking bad news in such a situation requires a considered, sensitive, tactful approach and also it requires lots of practice as a clinician when you would be doing uh, or conducting such um, counselling. So therefore, there's usually steps of breaking bad news, as all of you know. Um, the first step would be preparing the patient for um, such news and preparing her for it instead of like suddenly telling her that, hello, okay, here's the scan, your baby's dead, we couldn't find a heartbeat. That can be so shocking to her. Well, in fact, when you do prepare her, give her the warning shots, ask if she wants someone to be with her and ask if she knows anything about the result, giving her some shots that bad news is coming on the way. It has uh, been shown that it lessens the shock that follows and it also facilitates information processing. Also, giving um, the patient that space and having that those um, moments or pauses of silence would allow the patient to express her feelings, react, you empathizing as well, taking things slowly as you go through the consultation. You don't really have to mention everything um, regarding intrauterine fetal death that you know in the guideline in this initial consultation. Of course, there would be in real life consultations that would follow in which more information would be given, especially um, about postmortem examinations. You have to be really sensitive about it. So we have three lovely volunteers, Gwija, Hasin and Diti. Gwija would be breaking the news, taking history. Hasina would be taking over, talking about the manager plan, and then Diti would be doing an interesting version of the case scenario in which the husband um, would be there um, instead of the patient, and uh, she would be answering the husband's question um, about the intrauterine fetal death. I want you to pay, sorry, pay, not pay, pay close attention to how they performed. So, because to be honest and to give them justice, they were excellent. They really did it in a nice way that is required to easily pass a station like that in the exam. Let's come and read our case scenario. You have it in front of you in the screen. I'll just be reading it from the laptop. You're the SC5 covering the antenatal clinic. You're about to see Alison Gray, a 43 years old, primary gravida who had primary infertility for five years. Her first IVF cycle was in 2018, it failed. Her second IVF cycle was successful and now she's pregnant. She's been booked under your, cons your consultant's care. She came in today for her routine growth scan and is waiting for you to discuss the report. Your consultant had to leave the clinic for the emergency, so you're the second best senior, you'll be the SD5 senior reg to give such news. Of course, you, you wouldn't want to delay it until our next visit when the consultant comes back. Let's, you have the growth scan in front of you. Growth scan shows she's uh, 34 weeks, one day is cephalic, normal growth, normal liker, placenta anterior, fetal movement, fetal heart being are not seen. And it was confirmed twice, so usually intertrifeal death is confirmed by two sonographers before the final report has been issued. The patient has a few questions, if you can see. Is my baby okay once she comes in? Because um, some sonographers may have that weird look on their face. Um, once the news is broken to her, she will start crying and she'll start blaming herself. It's my fault I killed my baby. Why did this happen? Can I see my baby after birth? Will the NHS fund another IVF cycle for me? So let's come and see um, Gurija. And I repeat again. 
please pay close close attention. I really loved her performance, especially her role play. She was just lovely, beautiful. Okay, just let me open the. Hello, I'm Dr. Kirija, one of the doctors in the antenatal clinic today. Can I confirm your name and age, please? I'm Alison Gray. I'm 43 years, doctor. Okay. And uh, what would you like me to call you? Alison, fine. Okay, uh, Alison, uh, we are meeting today to discuss about your ultrasound scan report. Is that right? Uh, yes, doctor, I am expecting this consultation very much. Mm -hmm. uh, before we move on to discussing that, uh, I would like to know if there is somebody accompanying you today? No, doctor. I'm all the way alone. My partner went for a work, a emergency work. Mm -hmm. And would you like me to call somebody to accompany you throughout the discussion? I can call my midwife to support no, you. Okay, doctor. It's okay. Okay. Uh, is my baby okay, doctor? Because I don't like the look on his photographer's face. Can you tell me about my baby? Yeah, How yeah, the baby is doing? I'm getting to that, Alison. Uh, have you named your baby yet? Yeah, we have named him John. Okay. So, uh, I have confirmed your uh, name and NHS number on the ultrasound scan, Alison. Uh, and uh, okay. the findings have been uh, confirmed by two doctors. And okay. I'm sorry, I'm afraid that I have some concerning news for you. Actually, what's that, doctor? Is my John doing okay? Uh, actually, Alison, uh, when we did the scan, uh, when we checked uh, John's heart, I'm sorry to say this, we noticed that the heart had stopped beating. And uh, I'm so what sorry, say, John has died inside your womb, Alison. Oh my god! My god, we were expecting John a lot, doctor. Uh, I didn't expect this news, this consultation. I'm so sorry. Uh, I don't know, I'm, I'm going to Paris. Please save these oh, tissues. to support you throughout the whole uh, uh, consultation and we would help you convey to your husband as well. some time off for now? No, doctor, we can touch your consultation. Okay, please have some water, Alison. Thank you, doctor. So, what should we do next? Okay, uh, is it okay if I ask you a few questions before we discuss the further plan? I'm so sorry, but uh, can you tell me what, uh, how the pregnancy has been so far for you? So far, it's so wonderful, doctor. This is my second IVF, and I'm under the consultant care only. So I want a regular visit, all my bloods, everything is normal, all these scans, everything they told it is normal. And this is my second IVF. Previous, I have already a failed IVF. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we are very happy and excited to have John so. So, doctor told it will be another a month, a couple of weeks to go to have the job in my hands, but I lost. I'm so, I'm so sorry, Alison. Uh, I know it must be so, so difficult for you. Uh, did you have any fevers recently? No, doctor. Any bleeding from down below? No, no bleeding. Any loss of fluid? No. Okay, and do you have any medical conditions, Alison? 
no doctor, I'm fit and healthy, except for my age, I don't have any risk factors, that's what the consultant told me. Any operations you have undergone in your tummy or down below? Uh, I had this diagnostic laparoscopy keyhole surgery for my infertility work, other than that I don't have any. And do you have any allergies? No doctor. Do you smoke, drink alcohol or take any recreational drugs? No doctor. And uh, are you well supported at home? Yeah, that is very supportive. Mm, that's good. Do you know your blood group? Yeah, doctor, I'm more positive. Okay, and uh, your weight to height ratio? Uh, I'm so sorry, doctor, I don't remember that. No problem, Alison, okay. Uh, and uh, okay, thank you for all that information, Alison. Uh, we would now uh, move on to discussing your further plan. Thank you. Okay, so all of you do know now what I meant by please pay attention to creation performance. Well done, well done, well done. It was perfect, uh, flawless, and um, you did follow all the steps of breaking bad news. You prepared the patient for the news. Your introduction was lovely. So let's start from the beginning. Your introduction was beautiful. You yeah. went through all the steps of breaking bad news. You were, um, you were not rushing. You were taking your time to discuss with the patient and inform her and empathize about the news. The third thing is that you empathized. After that, your tone of voice was very, very appropriate. You asked about the baby's name because usually you can use the baby's name when you break the news about the scan. You also, um, just let me see here, you reacted to her questions and you assured her most importantly that it's not her fault. When you came to the history, you were systematic. You had a blend of open and closed ended questions. However, you could have asked the patient about any change or decrease in the fetal movement in, in the past um, one, two, or three days and don't forget drug intake and medications that she's using because basically in the history a focused one for intrauterine fetal death you'd want to find out if there's any risk factor or cause uh, for it and also for you to cover the safety points blood group excellent because if she's negative then you would want to give her IDD if you fail to ask that question and she's negative you, I think you would fail the whole uh, patient safety scenario. So well done, Gavita, when you inquired about that. Um, however, I do just have small it's a bitsy, um comments. Um, you told her we are happy to support you throughout this consultation. I think that just that was your tongue slipping a little bit. Usually, I, I'm sorry, you do, I think you did um, mean that you would be um, supporting her and her husband throughout all of this journey of accepting the fact of the IFD and moving on. So you can tell her that um, we do understand the impact of such loss for both you and your husband. Therefore, we would be ensuring that you are provided with appropriate support throughout. Okay, so this is a sentence that you can mention. You did ask her, are you okay? Usually, I would advise that you avoid uh, such a question because she's not Okay, all right. I'm, I don't understand that you asked that question just to see and check upon her. Instead of it, if you want to check um, if she's fine or not, you can just ask her, um, Alison, can you just can you tell me what you're thinking about at the moment? All right? Or you can use an empathy sentence. I can see um, how devastating and upsetting this news is for you. But we are here to support you throughout this. And um, since we do understand and we do appreciate the impact of such news from both you and your husband, we'll be ensuring that you have the appropriate support. So you can mention sentences like these according to the situation. Um, all right, so I don't have any more comments for you, um, Gavita. Excellent. Well done. I really loved your attitude in this scenario. Let's go on and see Hasina how she would continue with it. Sarah, to move forward, I'm going to give a lot of information. At any time, if you want me to ask any question or repeat me anything, please feel free to do so, okay? Okay. 
in terms of your delivery we do have two options one is vaginal delivery and another is cesarean section we usually recommend vaginal delivery as if you can deliver vaginally you can uh, return your early daily activities very early and uh, your future delivery will be less complicated and uh, there is no risk of operation okay but if you choose for cesarean section, there is risk of anesthesia or risk of operation and future delivery will, will be more complicated. Okay? Okay. So in terms of vaginal delivery, uh, we do have two options. We can wait for starting of labor naturally or we can kick start of labor. So if you want to, uh, if you want uh, natural labor, I mean starting of labor naturally, you can wait up to three weeks. Uh, if delivery occur within 48 hours, there usually there is no risk. But if uh, delivery does not occur within 48 hours, in that case, you can wait for further uh, three weeks if your uh, water have not broken and you are physically well. Uh, however, at this time, you need to come to hospital twice weekly to do blood test to make sure that you have no bleeding problem. Am I clear so far? Yes. And if you wants to, uh, um, some women wants to deliver as early as possible, and we also recommend this. In that case, uh, we uh, give a tablet vaginally to kick start of your labor. For this reason, you need to admit in the hospital, and uh, sometimes uh, labor pain may not start. In that case, you may need to go for cesarean section. So, which options would you like to prefer, Sarah? difficult for me to make a decision right now. I need to think about it. Yes, uh, I know, Sarah, it's very difficult for you. So you can take time, you can think and let us know, okay? Yes. Okay. So do you have any question? Um, yes, when, when can I hold my baby? Yes, following your delivery, you can hold your baby uh, immediately after delivery or a few hours after delivery, okay? And you can see and hold him or you can spend as much time as you want. And mementos like handprint, footprint, locks of hair will be collected and uh, kept in hospital records. And if you want, you can, you can have them at any time. Okay? Okay. And um, another thing is um, Jack's birth registration and funeral arrangement will also be done by the hospital and your religious and cultural consideration will be taken into account and will be respected. Am I clear, sir? Yes. And I know it's very distressing uh, time for you and your family. So we will give you maximum support following delivery, okay? And there are bereavement counselor. Uh, she will visit you fr uh, frequently to make sure that you are coping well. Am I clear, Sarah? Yes. Do you have any concern? I want to know how this happened. I really didn't expect this. Yes, unfortunately, uh, Sarah, 50 of, out of 100 cases, we cannot find out any cause. Uh, but to find out the cause, we do recommend some tests for you and for Jack as well. For you, blood will be taken to see your sugar level, your clotting problem or viral infection, and some other test and swab test uh, will be done to rule out any infection. And for Jack, uh, detailed examination will be done to find out any genetic problem. And uh, this test uh, will be done by a specialist doctor and it is called post-mortem examination, okay? Okay. And this can be done as a limited examination or can be done as a detailed examination. So detail about this examination will be discussed with you following delivery. I know it's very distressing for you to decide now. And nothing will be uh, done without your consent. Am I clear, Sarah? Yes. Do you have any question? Um, yes, I want to know if uh, I will get funding for the future. Yes, uh, Sarah, considering your age, it's very unlikely that NHS will fund another cycle. But if there is any frozen eggs, your fertility center may consider transfer. So I will inform a consultant and your fertility center as well. And I will refer you to clinical commission group regarding their, uh, the funding and they will give you full information about it. Okay? All right. Okay, Sarah, I'm really sorry for your loss. 
and uh, we are not alone. We here as a team are going to support you in this difficult situation, okay? And there is a support group called SANS. I will put you in touch with the support group and I will give you patient information leaflet and 24 hour hospital contact number and I will inform my consultant as well and make an appointment with the consultant. Any other concern do you have? Okay, thank you. Okay, well done, Hasi. I'll give you a clap as well. And give you the first uh, candidate a clap as well. Both of you did it really well. And um, Hasina, your communication was perfect. Your tone of voice was very soft and subtle, so you're not um, sounding like uh, some people have a high pitched uh, voice, so uh, they would need to do extra work in um, breaking the news. But Hasina, because I, I know. Um, your tone of voice, uh, this was your natural tone of voice, so that's an extra bonus that would really help you in sounding, um, empathizing with uh, the patient, all right? Um, I really liked the beginning when you um, told her that if she has, uh, basically you were opening that door for her to ask questions. I'll be giving you information if you, at any point, if you want to stop me, ask any questions, please feel free to do so. You can also add another uh, tiny sentence, um, like um, it may be difficult for you to hear some of the information that I'm going to give you. So at any point, if you feel that you don't want to go on for forwards with the consultation, please let me know and we'll stop and I can reschedule another one. So what do you think? That's another sentence that you can use. Um, you gave her options. Vaginal delivery and cesarean section, I really don't know why you brought up the option of cesarean section, but I can understand where this came from because um, patients have the right to know all of the options available. So how about, you mentioned the vaginal delivery and the induction and all of that, or ratings for spontaneous labor, and then after that, you can tell her that there's an option of cesarean section, but I won't really advise that unless she asks you, can't I deliver by cesarean section? Then you tell her it is an option, but it is associated with complications now on and later on when um, you want to get pregnant again. So at least you will try to back her off, off it. But of course, if she still insists on the section, then it would be given to her. You talked about spontaneous labor, the risk of waiting three weeks, DIC. Uh, don't forget also the appearance of the baby can change. She has to know that because in case after baby is delivered, um, both most parents would want to see the baby hold the baby. And they can be surprised and say, why didn't you tell us that our baby's appearance would change? We would have chosen to go on with um, induction. Uh, in terms of induction, I really like the way you brought it up. And also you said that some women may, may choose it. You talked about the risks, ended up with their section. How about nausea, vomiting? the side effects of the medications that we'd be giving you that will soften and open the neck of your womb and kickstart of the contractions and it will be more longer than going um, uh, into spontaneous labor and it can be more painful as well and there is a chance that like you said um, it may stop halfway and then you may need to go in for a cesarean section which, which is associated with risks now and later on. Um, the patient asked you, can I see my baby? Well done, you answered that questions, uh, question nicely. Uh, what I would advise you to mention as well, Hasin, which is very important, that uh, you talk to her right away after the options of delivery, um, arrangements that would be done when she comes into the hospital for delivery, whether it was spontaneous or induction, that she would be in a separate room, away from other rooms, so usually we we call it a butterfly room on the labor ward. Um, ward, it would be like a small uh, butterfly, uh, usually for lethal fetal anomalies or for um, IEFD. So um, all the staff would know that um, that's an injury trying fetal death. Usually seniors only go in to see the patient. A senior midwife would be there for support, continuous support throughout. Her husband, her family, her friends are allowed to go in, plus she would be put on um, pain relief, she would have an appointment with the anesthetist to discuss all of that. So tell her, tell her that when you come into labor, we'd be putting you in a separate room with a, a senior midwife who would support you throughout. Also family, friends are allowed to come in to support you as well. 
and um, we would want you to be on optimum pain relief so the anesthetist will discuss with you how to have a labor free uh, pain free labor so just like I think this will take less than a minute around a couple of seconds so I'll mention it it's quite important um, you talked about support because you understood the impact of it um, so you said that um, um, a counselor would would be going to see her um, how about you, you the signs you mentioned it at the end how about you mention it at the beginning and also health visitor uh, with it just let me see what you have mentioned so to bring that up you can always say that um, after pregnancy loss you may have a difficult range of emotions angry frustrated even sad and sometimes depression um, it's a normal reaction to loss because we do understand it's not easy and uh, with time you'll be able to move on accept the loss and put it behind you and be prepared to start on um, or start off again therefore during this time we would want to ensure that you are fully supported you'll be having the bereavement council and health visit and your midwife come and visit you regularly at home just to make sure that you are emotionally well we also have what we call SANS it's like a support network which supports parents who go uh, through this uh, difficult or devastating journey. What do you think? That's a nice sentence that you can use. Uh, because if you do leave it at the end like you did the sands, you may run out of time. You can't really guarantee. Uh, so mention it at the beginning. That's more important than discussing about the postmortem. Because you just broke the news for her now. She'll go home. You want to make sure that you, you supported her, you empathized enough in order to, for her to, um, what can I say, in order for the emotions that would follow them, would a little, they won't really disappear, but they would be less heavy on her. So I would advise that you do finish that first and then go on discuss discuss the postmortem because later on the postmortem can be discussed in details. Usually it's not discussed in details in the first visit unless the patient asks about it. Um, she asked you why did this happen, so you briefly, I like the way you briefly talked about maternal tests, post-mortem, um, partial, complete. You can also tell her that um, going through this can be very um, difficult um, for you uh, to hear such information. Uh, do you want me to talk to you in more details about it or do you want to leave it for next time? That's just a test if you are required to talk in detail about post-mortem because um, six minutes or five minutes that you have after breaking the news and taking history is not enough to go through all of this in detail but at some point you would want to mention that there are tests that to find out the cause she so asked you about um, NHS funding you said unlikely but you talked about a uh, clinical commission group so you could say that I will write to you GP GP would um, see the clinical commission group if they would fund it for you or not I like that you empathize again at the end you give her hospital contact numbers, information leaflets, an appointment with uh, the consultant. Um, you use the word okay many times to check understanding. Try to not use that, not only just in breaking bad news, but in any case scenario. Just, am I clear so far? Do you have any questions? All right. And um, she, when she told you that, she can't really make up her mind about what options she wants when you mentioned to her the two options available. Uh, you told her it's okay, you can take your time. Usually, um, don't ask her what option she wants. I, I would, you can ask her though, but I would really prefer after you talk to her about spontaneous uh, delivery and then induction of labor on your own, tell her that. So these are the two options available for you in terms of delivering baby. Um, I don't want you to make a decision right now until you absorb all of the news and get the support needed. Take your time. Whenever you make up your mind or you're ready, you can come in. We can even go through all of this again. Because um, it has been show, seen that after breaking bad news, the information processing by the patient would be really, 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 really small. And um, she may even take away quarter or half of the information that you gave her. That's why they would be repeat visits. So if you demonstrate that, I think that would really be wonderful. Okay, so well done, Hasina. Good, you covered everything, and I think that you would, uh, or I can guarantee that you would uh, get a pass in colleagues, um, communication with the patient, and um, what is it again? Apply your and safety.
right? So let's come and see Diti. Diti now will be talking to the patient's husband, and that's just in a different version of the scenario. Hello, I'm Dr. Diti here, one of the senior doctors in the antenatal clinic today. Hi, I'm Mason Gray. How are you? What's your age? 43 years old? Okay. I'm Mason. Uh, with whom you are accompanied? With your husband? Okay. What's his name? Mr. John. Uh, please call him. Uh, hello, doctor. Uh, I am John, the husband of uh, uh, Miss Ingray. Uh, the, uh, there's an unfortunate thing which has happened. We are devastated and quite unhappy and uh, disappointed. Uh, we came to know through the scan that uh, the baby has died uh, in the womb as there was no heartbeat. I just wanted to know, uh, can you kindly suggest why this happened? Yes, I can see, Mr. John, you and Amis and Gray both are so in a deep uh, pain. Uh, but uh, the, uh, to answer your questions, you know, 50% of the cases of uh, conditions like you, uh, there is no reason. And the rest 50% of the time, we can find out the cause. The most probable cause, maybe there is a developmental delay of the baby. That means the baby may be small in the size or not well, not uh, well developed inside the womb. There can be some kind of infections. There can be preeclampsia, that is a high BP blood pressure and uh, protein in the urine. And sometimes maybe your afterbirth, that is a placenta, is separated out, out of the womb of the wall of the womb. And uh, that can uh, affect your baby's health and baby's blood circulation and baby can die. I'm so sorry. But the thing is, you know, in one in 200 pregnancies, there can be stillbirth. Do you know what is stillbirth? Stillbirth means baby has no signs of life inside the womb after 24 weeks of pregnancy. What's your next question? Uh, the doctor, uh, would, I would just like to know in this sad situation which we are in, what would be the recommended next course of action? Yeah, Mr. John, I can understand. Um, see, first of all, I would recommend we, you and uh, Amis and both, we can refer you to some counsellor because uh, both of you are in uh, deep grief. So at least you can be, you know, a little bit stable. And second thing, now the plan of mode of delivery, there are three options. First of all, we have to admit her and... Uh, Admissions would be under consultant and a specialized uh, midwife who is experienced in this kind of uh, situations will be com completely staying with her throughout her stay in the hospital. And for the mode of delivery, there are three options. Number one, she can admit right away and uh, we can start her labor pains by giving some medicines artificially and then she can deliver a baby like a normal delivery. Second thing, maybe she can go back, she can just take a little bit rest mentally, physically and uh, then she can mentally prepare and come back after a few, few days, two, three days like that. And then we can start her uh, liver pains and we can deliver her. Third option, maybe we can just wait for the nature's call. Usually it is found that after the death of the baby, within three weeks, uh, nat naturally patient can start the liver pain and she can come. But in this situation, she has to go for a regular checkup uh, at least twice in a week to measure her blood pressure, to measure that her blood is not coagulating because sometimes it can turn into, you know, blood can clot inside. It is known as DIC. If we uh, see if it lift the patients and unsupervised. Uh, so we have to monitor all these things, okay? And after the delivery of the baby, you can touch, you can uh, take the photographs, hand print, foot print. You can uh, take the photograph of the, you can just uh, uh, record some lock of the hairs and uh, you can uh, preserve as a memento. We can also preserve in the record and uh, we can uh, advise some of the tests for both of you to find out the cause, some blood tests, some urine tests and plus placental examinations plus postmortem of the baby also we can do in the postmortem detailed examinations of the baby we can offer to find out the cause in with the baby's body cavity, heart, lungs, everything will be special, examined by specialist team. Do, am I clear so far? 
uh, uh, doctor yes uh, thank you then i have a last question now in case we want to go for a third uh, as you are quite aware we, this this mishap happened in the second cycle uh, in uh of ivf now in case we want to go for the third cycle of ivf uh would the nhs be able to uh, sponsor as uh, uh, free of cost would we be eligible for this would like to know actually mr shmon the nhs funds the ivf cycle up to age of 42 years and already admission is 43 years but still we can just write down to her gp and uh, specialist clinical commissioning group and we can narrate her situations and they can decide on this ex- on this uh, issue do require and be i will document your consultations i will write uh, give you appointment with my consultant and i will write back to your gp and community midwife about the uh, admissions is there any other query for you uh, thank you doctor that's all uh, thanks for all your support and we are uh, i have quite uh, uh, this solace to my heart that you gave me correct uh, answer thank you very much thank you so much olive should i cut Sorry for that. This always happens. Uh, okay. Um, so, Diti, well done. You did really well when talking to the husband. Um, you acknowledged the emotions when when you started at the beginning. Um, you can add more and say, "I'm sorry for meeting you under such circumstances," because, like, you're going to be empathetic with the patient herself. Also, that's um, the father of the baby that has just died. So. as well um you don't want to empathize as well and share that you don't understand that it has an impact on him at the same time he asked you um why did this happen it's good that you mentioned general cause of intrauterine fetal death you can also say that so because he's asking about his baby in particular you can say that as of now we don't have any answer to this question we need to do some investigations both on mom and um the baby um but general um reasons can be this 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 and this and even though if you do the test in half of the babies they may not be any cause or all, but we will be investigating this and see that can be your honest answer um you then ask at the first he asked the first question so you asked him uh, what's your next question you sounded like you were in, in an interview I don't ask that question. Usually pause he will ask or if you want to invite questions um ask him um anything else I can help you with or any more details that you would want to know or you just go on and talk about the the delivery. Okay? I uh, use some words like but the thing is the word thing try to avoid it. You know also avoid it. So these two words avoid them because they can really affect your communication. Um he asked you about the next course of action. I really like that you um explained why there would be a need for a counselor because both are in deep grief so I like that sentence you used. What I can suggest that you could say in a nicer way, uh, for example that um it's understandable that both you and your wife may go may go through a range of um, emotions uh, due to such news and loss of the baby because uh, we don't understand that it's not easy uh, in order to support both of you we do have services available so the help visit a bereavement counselor we come and see both of you at home and we also have the sand so this is your opportunity to talk about all of this um, and try to use more sentences just to show that this is difficult for them You talked about the options in induction of labor, uh, spontaneous labor risks of both. Don't forget DT like I mentioned to Hasina that um the risk of uh, sorry or the um chance of baby's appearance changing when you want to avoid spontaneous labor just for the reason like I said that they would want to see and hope baby take pictures as well. Or you talked about that point and then you talked about tests to investigate. Um the tests to investigate You could have mentioned them at the beginning when he asked you why did this happen and you talked about the various causes you can that can be your chance to talk about that. I'm not saying that what you did is wrong, it is right, but just in order for you to prioritize things you can always um change and mold uh, the structure or the steps of your consultation according to 
um, the patient in front of you, right? Uh, so um, I, all, I know that you would start breaking the news, taking history, and then talking about delivery, and then um, the support, and then the postmortem. You can always change that if the patient does ask you a question related to it. And the funding, well done, CCG, Clinical Commissioning Groups. Um, usually it will be a DT. You did this in five to six minutes, but in the exam, if it comes like this, it would just be a whole 10 minutes. So this can be your chance to talk in detail about maternal investigations, partial and um, complete postmortem, that nothing would be done without uh, the consent of both of you. Okay, sorry, the consent of both of you. All right, and, and just mention what will be done, how many weeks until the result of the postmortem um, will come out. And you did communicate, you said you would communicate with the GP, so I will tick all the points for you. Well done, just work on the small comments that I gave you because they can make um, a huge difference. Um, I hope all of you had benefited from this, especially uh, the volunteers because they were the one who uh, performed the task. And I just want to mention um, a few points. This is a summary uh, to recap into tripetal death. So number one, preparing the patient for the news. Uh, number two, giving her the news straightforward. Um, that baby's heartbeat was not found, meaning that use the baby's name Mike or John has died inside the room. Silence, pause in between, let the patient vent, use empathy sentence, show the patient that uh, sorry, ask the patient if she wants to continue or she wants to stop. If she wants to continue, show her that she has the right to stop the consultation at any time when she wants to. Give information in small amounts. Don't try to give her all the information about intertrapical death in this initial consultation. Limit your use of jargon. Eliminate it completely. Give information in small chunks and check understanding because that would facilitate information processing. Put yourself in the position of the patient. You were just told that your baby has died. Are you going to pay attention to the information? You'll just be thinking, you'll be grieving, you would be sad. You'd have that range of emotions. So usually try to simplify the information that you give her. Tell her most importantly that she doesn't have to decide right now. And you'd recommend that she does not decide. You'd be giving her a leaflet, hospital contact numbers. She can take her time to accept the loss. Once she's ready, she can come in. There's no hurry to do anything right now today or decide upon anything to be done now. Um, be clear in um, your counselling. Check in between. Um, do you want me to continue further? Do you want me to talk about this in detail? Just to check if um, she's okay. And then at the end, empathise again. Tell her that you would um, communicate with the GP Communicate with the midwife to cancel her antenatal appointments because they may, she may still be sending the appointments and empathise again. SANS bereavement counsel, a health visitor. Health visitor bereavement counsel will be visiting the patient at home. SANS is a support and network for such parents with um, uh, fetal loss. And empathise, tell her we are here to support you. Don't lose hope. There is a chance that you may have, uh, that you can have actually a successful pregnancy. Next time when you want to get pregnant again, we will be discussing uh, with you what would be done. And I'm really sorry for be, being the one giving you such news, or I'm sorry for the bearer of such news. This is a sentence that uh, you can use. There's a lot, I have a collection of lots of sentences that you can use, but I really don't want to elongate um, this so all of you won't get bored. Um, in the middle and listen to it and watch it until the end but use the sentences that you are comfortable with show it in the tone of your voice in your body language be slow but don't be that slow that you would run out of 10 minutes without mentioning everything okay um, if any of you have any questions you can write them in the comments below or I will I, I did provide the links for the telegram group Facebook group uh, Facebook page and um, website if you want to take a look at it you can reach me uh, or reach out to me in any of these. The volunteers who did the cases, if you have any questions, you can just um, telegram me, okay, with a message. So well done, all of you. I'll give you another clap, the three of you. Excellent. And I'm sure if the three of you do this, do this scenario in the exam, you will pass it right away and you will really impress um, the lay examiner. Okay, everyone.
Bye-bye, and I'll see you next time.